What's up YouTube? Back at it again today and we're going to be working on our charging system for our Super Beetle project. Um, if you haven't been keeping up with us, over here we have a 1973 Super Beetle with a Subaru, Subaru turbocharged motor. It has the short block from a EJ255, so that would be like a WRX or Forester XT, and it has the heads from a naturally aspirated Impreza. Um, and on top of that we're using a VF48 turbo that would be out of an STI. Um, so what we're, what we're going to do today is we're going to finish up our grounding because we realized it was pretty poor in our first startup video, which you can see here. And we are also going to do our alternator wiring because you can see right now we have an alternator but we do not have it hooked up and it's not wired to anything. So we're going to hop on that and hopefully get a full charging system done by the end of this video. All right, so part of the issue we had is in our harness, it actually didn't come with any alternator wiring. So I actually went online and I found this company, iWire, and I've used them before for different Subaru projects. But from them, you can actually buy a terminated, here we go. You can actually buy a terminated alternator connector. Um, and I can use this to basically make my own harness. So we have one wire here we're not gonna use. I believe it's actually this guy, um, which would be set up to like, if you had a factory computer, it'd give it the signal to change, uh, basically turn the alternator on and off while it's driving, I think. Like maybe when you're at full throttle, it would turn the alternator off to gain some power, something along those lines. Uh, we're not gonna use that in this project, but we are gonna need to use one for our charge light, which we're gonna just basically wire one up to have because we don't currently have a charge light. And the other one's just gonna be our sense wire so that the alternator knows that we're, what voltage we're at. And on top of that, what we also purchased was a kit from Summit that's just kind of a generic alternator wiring kit. So it comes with some, what is this, six gauge wire. And it also has a fuse. So this is a fusible link, uh, pretty common, just so that you don't have any issues with your, uh, if your alternator has any issues, you don't end up starting a fire basically. And it comes with all of our butt connectors and uh, ring terminals that we'll need for this as well. So I'll show you how exactly we wire this all up and hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have the alternator running and charging our battery. Also, um, I bought this Outfront Motorsports. Before I even started this project, I bought this Outfront Motorsports alternator bracket so that we could kind of relocate it because this is the only kind of uh, accessory pulley system we need. And that came with a shortened belt, which is an off the shelf um, Gates belt actually, which is pretty nice quality. So we'll make sure that we also, you know, obviously put that on to make sure the alternator works correctly. So like I mentioned before, we're going to be adding the main wire to the alternator here and running it back to the starter to basically bridge back to battery positive. And then we also have to add in the three pin connector here. Um, as it goes on this connector, this line here we're not going to use, but we'll probably just keep it in the bundle for cleanliness and if we ever decide to use it in the future, but it'd basically be to the computer to control the alternator turning on and off while the car is driving. Um, this middle lead is going to go back to bot battery positive, which we'll probably do right at the crimp at the terminal. Um, and that just has to pretty much see 12 volts all the time to sense the battery voltage. And this third one has to go to a charge light um, for the for the alternator just to function correctly. Um, so we'll wire this back up to a light at the dash. We actually have a couple free that we can use because I kind of added them in preemptively. Um, so we'll do all that wiring and also run the, like I said, the battery pose back to positive on the starter, which essentially is positive at the battery. Okay, so now that we have heat shrink on here um, for the alternator connector, the next thing we need to do is actually connect the crimp between where the alternator wire goes to the main post and the wire that needs to be sensing what voltage is coming out. Um, so we'll do that all in one crimp and I'll show you how to do it if you don't have the exactly the right crimping tools. Um, and then we'll go on from there just running the wire from the alternator to the starter.
So I kind of whiffed and didn't realize I should pull. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Yeah, there we go. So I actually had to pull the, the wire that I'm connecting to the alternator through the strap, uh, through the sheathing. So now that I have it in there, I'll sneak it into the crimp. See, I just used the jaws jaws on my vise happen to have the crimp in it, so it came out pretty good if I, based on my opinion. Alright, so now that we got this all crimped together, we can see that it's going to work out just fine. So we'll go there and there, and then we'll run these wires to the back, I mean to the front of the car, to go to our um, dash light. And then also what we'll have to do, I forgot to mention, is we'll have to add in a fusible link somewhere between here and the starter, just in case at some point something happens with the alternator. We have a fusible link at least to um, make sure that we don't like start a fire. So the next thing we'll be figuring out exactly where back here we want the fusible link to end up. And to just make things a little easier for this wiring, we're going to take the intercooler out. But it was actually really easy because we did uh, we kind of did a little forward thinking. So all we had to do was disconnect the um, intake air temperature sensor and disconnect the plug, sorry, the hose that gets referenced for the blow-off valve. Um, so now, I, all that's left is when I pull it in, it'll disconnect from the throttle body itself and the turbo down here. Just to give you a better idea what we're talking about here. Um, so this is the back side of the motor. Um, just remove the inner cooler. And so we'll basically probably have the power wire. Um, I think we'll have it run under the intake manifold. So it'll end up coming out here somewhere by the starter. And see, this is our, even though it's a black lead, this is actually our positive to the battery. So we'll connect the alternator there and it'll go directly back to the battery. Also, we're gonna update our grounding um, for this. So at the same time we'll run our stuff back here to the battery to ground because um, this goes onto the ground cable. The colors are actually backwards. Well, I shouldn't say backwards, but negative has red in it and positive is all black. So it's a little confusing if you don't know what you're in for. So maybe we'll change that out too. But so next thing, like I said, is we'll get the fusible links somewhere set up out here. All right, so after looking around, I decided I'm actually gonna place my fuse right back here. So it'll sit something like this. Oh, man, you cannot see. So there we go, it'll sit something like this and we'll have one wire going to the alternator and one going to the starter and we'll be fusing between that. I'll show you it once it's installed to make a little more sense. And so now a little clearer view, we have it go back and you see it goes around and then it lands right on our fuse, which isn't installed yet, but that's our fuse holder. And so now we'll run another one from the bottom post to the back of the starter back here. And then all we need to do is run to the charge light and we'll be good to go. All right, so now we'll get the wire complete that goes from the starter to the, the fuse block. And this is kind of like a do as I say and as I do. You should definitely use the correct stripping tool uh, to pull to cut back the sheathing, and you should definitely try to use the correct crimping tool. But sometimes, you know, we just don't have that stuff available, and that's when, like me, you have to just make do with what you have.
right, so we got our wire made for the fuse to the starter. So the last thing we need to do for the alternator wiring is just wire up the charge light. So I'll show you when we have a little progress on that. So actually we have this light right here, which was originally going to be like an oil pressure warning light, but I'm going to use that as my charge light. And so what we'll have to do is just take it, make sure it's getting 12 volt switch so that it powers on when the key is on, which is really just our power button here. And then the ground side of it will run to the alternator. And here's a better look at it now that we have it a little more wired up. So you see we got the battery connector, oh, sorry, the alternator connector and the main post uh, wired in together for the voltage sense. And then it runs back. And you see here's our fuse, which is mounted to the sheet metal. It has a 200 amp fuse between them. And then the other side of it goes back and connects to the post on the starter. And we're going to run the white wire, which is our charge light, along with the starter wire right there, this red one, all the way back through the car and up to the dash. All right, so we have the light and everything wired in now, the charge light, I should say, to the alternator. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to start the car up, confirm that the charge light turns off, and check the voltage at the battery to see if it is charging. Just cross your fingers with me. We're going to put on the boost pack just to be safe. Alright, so something weird's happening now where the starter's not even getting enough power to crank the car over, even with the battery pack. So I disconnected the alternator power wire from there to see if that was somehow affecting it. So we're going to give it another try now with no alternator connected. It's really weird. It's like firing. The starter sounds like it's firing, but it's not actually turning over the motor. So we're going to go check that out real quick. Okay, so the solution very well might be hitting the starter with a hammer a couple times. So we're going to start with that.
All right, we got something for a second there. Ooh, we'll try disengaging the clutch while we do it. Maybe that'll relieve some pressure on it. Nothing still. All right, so it actually appears that our fuel injector on cylinder three right here seems to be stuck open and uh, it probably hydrolocked the motor and that's why we can't get it to turn over. But I can show you the reason I believe that we have a stuck fuel injector is, watch this. This is me turning over the engine by hand. And that is a ton of gas that just came out of it. So, and it's the only cylinder doing that. I can show you though that the charging light seems to be working, although we'll never really know until the alternator is running. But you see here when we get power, that red light turns on, which will be our charge light. And in theory, once the car is running and the alternator is working properly, that light will turn off. All right, so we're on a new day today. I think what I'm gonna do is start by doing a little testing on cylinder three fuel injector to figure out if it's working correctly and it's just stuck open or if we have a problem with the wiring. Um, fortunately, I actually realized I do have additional fuel injectors now. They haven't been flow tested or cleaned or anything, but um, it's better than nothing. And because we're using the EJ251 or 253 uh, intake manifold and injectors and such it's a little harder to, there's no aftermarket support really so i'm really hoping that what i have will work or we might have to reconsider what we're doing here with the intake manifold okay so we have power going to the car right now what i did was i just disconnected the fuel pump so that we're not flooding the engine again and now i'm going to go through and kind of test the fuel injectors and try to figure out what's going on all right so we're going to go into the injector test mode It seems like the injector is firing correctly. Okay, so that seemed to be working correctly. So now what I'm going to do is actually plug the fuel pump back in. Because um, maybe we just have a problem with the O-ring and it's not actually the injector stuck open, but one of the O-rings is torn and letting fuel pass the injector. Alright, now we have the fuel pump on, so we're going to prime the system and see if we have oil, uh, fuel spray by. Everything seems good, so maybe we had a fluke, which I don't really like to accept. Alright, everything seems to be working normally again, so we're going to just try to give it a fire up and check again to see if our, um, if our alternator is actually charging. That was a really weird, um, honestly that was really strange, so I'm a little hesitant to do too much with this, but at least we can put the spark plugs back in and make sure this bad girl fires up and that the alternator is working. All right, so now that we're assuming everything's all right, the plan will be to get the car running, confirm that the charge light turns off on the dash, and then we'll probe the battery, and it should be around 14 volts if the alternator is working correctly. So you see I got my multimeter here all set to go. 
Actually, we can probably put it right on the battery and have that already dealt with. That one's getting very messy up here. Okay, perfect. Let's give it a shot. Alright, all I can think of is that I was unhappy with the air temperature uh, sensor disengaged, so I plugged it back in. So let's see what we get now. Nice! Smoky. All right, it's a little smoky in here, so we're gonna try it one more time and actually check for the charge light. Alright, so unfortunately we got a little smoked out there because of how much exhaust this car is actually pumping out. Um, but we did get a chance to check, check, test the charging system. Uh, the battery was going up to about 14 and a half volts, so that's perfect. The alternator is definitely working. One problem that we did have is that the charge light didn't turn off. Um, I suspect this is because the charge light is an LED rather than an incandescent, so it might not have the right like load for the circuitry to work properly. So that's probably the first thing I'll dig into to just complete the alternator wiring. But more or less, we're all set with that. So the next things we have to do before we can actually move this under its own power is uh, we need to create an exhaust and we need to create our cooling system. Oh, and just to add, leave a comment below for what you guys think I should do for the dashboard for the long term. I'm not sure if I should continue to use the um, kind of aviation style gauge cluster that I have or if I should update to something like a digital dash and mount it into a regular Super Beetle uh, dash pad. And also let me know what you guys think I should do for seats because we're definitely going to need those before our first drive. This dash it's becoming a little dated with all the updates I've made so like I don't have an air fuel ratio that will match that cluster. I can't find one anywhere. So I have the current uh, innovate one um so do you guys think i should go with something different i could get like go back to the stock dash and maybe install a um, digital dash if you guys think that would be interesting and good looking um so let me know your thoughts below in the comments because i really think this dash just really isn't going to do it anymore for the setup we have so make sure you tune into our next set of videos where we'll show you how we create the exhaust system and how we create the cooling system so with that um, make sure you hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to do so. Leave a comment below and we will see you again soon.